Huh. Guess I gotta do a review now. Are you ready? Hey guys, Chris Jenny X and what? Proud of yourself, Rally. Proud of yourself. Don't look at me like that. I'm I'm very I'm very bit oh I can't be mad at you. Axiom Verge. Before we got Metroid Samus Returns, God bless that game, and AM2R, I need to play that game more. The last actual Metroid game we had was Federation Force, and before that was Other M, which I only just got to the first appearance of Commanding Officer Adam, and there was enough of Samus monologuing and explaining every little detail that it... You know what, I'll get to that when I get to that. What I'm trying to say is the last 2D Metroid title before Samus Returns was Metroid Zero Mission, which was on the Game Boy Advance in 2004. 14 years ago! We had a number of Metro style games, again, I'm not calling them Metroidvanias and Leicester Castlevania games, but none of them felt as much like Metroid as, well, Metroid. So two guys named Tom Happ and Dan Adelman had to, actually, actually, hold on. Okay, it, come to, it came to my attention that Dan only helped promote the game as his producer and that Tom Happ did the work literally all by himself. I hope I got that right. Apologies, you know, for all that. So, Dan, just to take a backseat for now, please, thank you. After about five years of development, Tom Happ Games, yes, that's the name of the company, I think, released Axiom Verge on the PS4 and PS Vita, and people loved it. Eventually, it got ported to Xbox One, the Wii U, and the Switch, which I heard was pretty hard to do for some reason. Nonetheless, was the game truly worthy enough to be a spiritual successor to Classic Metroid? Well, I'm gonna find out because I tweeted at Dan Adelman about it and he wants one, so uh, let's take a little look at Axiom Verge. Let's go! Oh, uh, right. Uh, okay, I almost forgot. I normally don't end up mentioning it for every video, but I was informed to let you guys know. There will be spoilers. Like, heavy freaking spoilers. So, if you don't want to be spoiled, I guess don't watch it, or maybe you'll skip to some time at the end, you know, or... Heck, I recommend buying and playing the game fully before even watching this video in that sense. It can help with their sales and everything. Okay, we good? We good? Okay, we good. I kind of want to note that there is a speedrun mode, as the game can apparently be beaten in under an hour, according to the achievements. Yeah, good luck with that. I ain't gonna do that anytime soon. So the game starts off in New Mexico, circa 2005, where it appears to be snowing? Boy, climate change is getting really bad, huh? We find the main protagonist of the game, Trace, working on some kind of machine. For science! However, something goes wrong as an explosion rocks the building, possibly killing Trace's lab partner, spoilers it didn't, and himself. However, Trace wakes up inside of a pod of some sort, being called out by someone or something. A gun? Look, lady, I, I've seen what happened in Parkland. I think guns would be the complete opposite of helpful right at this moment. Actually, this laser gun thingy called the Axiom Disruptor is required to progress. Well, at least I'm not potentially killing anything with it. You know, okay, I have no idea if those are sentient, so... Oh... They grow back. Okay, so I'm not gonna kill any living things with a brain, so that's fine. Okay, so I'm not gonna kill any human beings anywhere, at least, right? Right? Okay, cool. So, after some progression and some immensely gross pulsating enemies that remind me of the ocean coral reef stuff, we... Die. Wait, what? Fucking mind machines, eh? Okay, the game actually acknowledges you dying as, I guess, part of the story, which is pretty cool, actually. I also love Trace's reaction to it all, outright saying, Excuse me, miss, I do believe I misheard you now. If I may be so bold, uh, did you just say I fucking died? Well, that is a huge oversight. Seriously, leaving a glitch so major that it impedes my progress like that? Most unprofessional! Oh, good God, that's gross! And I thought the Titans of Arkham were pulsating flesh monsters of disgust. By the way, sir, who is that Theros? Oh, right, he's uh, he's trying to kill me instead of listening to reason. Uh, well, I can't punch it, so... You all saw him come at me, I had to defend myself. Man, another glitched area? I could swear when the devs put more care into the games than most AAA publishers and also devs. 
Oh, that's right. They do. Never mind. So after passing by some relatively gruesome scenery, we find- HOLY FUCK! Trace, you're pretty calm for someone seeing this for the first time. Then again, you just killed Steve Bannon's spare head slash prolapsed anus, so what do I know? So yeah, this is Else Nova, and we gotta restore some kind of power filter or she'll die. Ugh, it's always the bulbous pulsating growths that have to be shot. Ugh. A dress just up there, eh? Wonder what that do. Oh, I get it. Yeah, those glitches we saw earlier, they were intentional and essentially based on the glitches that caused visual static back in the day of the old NES games. As well as based on glitches, if I'm not mistaken, that you have to exploit in order to properly progress through the game. Because probably the game is already bullshit hard enough as it is, I'm guessing. I... This also includes things like an address bomb that is required in some of the really garbled gook, and three different coats that, in addition to increased defense, allows you to sort of teleport through walls. Though some coats are more limited in what you can do compared to the stronger ones. Oh hey, there's an enemy in the wall. I bet there's an item there too. Oh! It's just a VHS screening area. That, uh... That works too. Does anyone even remember VHS tapes though? No joke, I actually had no idea that there were various secret areas like this in this game, namely during my Wii U playthrough. I swear, this was a genuine surprise to me. Of course it turns out that these areas are even harder than the game's usual difficulty. And this game can already get rough, as you'll die a lot if you're not good enough. Well, that is part and parcel with most games based on retro stuff. And Dark Souls. Also, Demon Souls. And Bloodborne. Oh, when you can glitch enemies too, which can make them anything from harmless to invulnerable, but used as platforms to literally either of the two. There's also a number of collectible notes and such lying around that tell a bit of backstory to the situation, some of which will be explained soon. Such as the fact that Els Nova and her people are called Rusalki, and that we now need to get repair drones to work. Which leads us to an area that I have to now officially point out something due to obligation. The music is fucking awesome! Just listen to some of these tracks! I really wanted to share the tracks, but at the moment I do not have the 10 bucks to spare for the soundtrack. I really didn't want to pirate it, so take a listen for yourself instead at axionverge.bandcamp.com to listen and pay for it. Please support indie game devs unless you like paying $10 for an extra save slot. Happy Hellamus! By the way, these bosses, they're freaking nuts just saying hello. As we get the power filter going, we then learn from Elsnova about Breach, which is apparently bad for you, so the planet we're on, named Sudra, was created to keep things in check. But then some evil guy named the Theros showed up and pretty much, uh, caused mass genocide through a kind of pathogen. Much like how guns help cause mass murders in America. Although in Sudra's case, they're actually working to prevent further death and actually do something about the blatant problem we have. <laughs> so far, only the Rusalki have survived, as evidenced before, and are locked up via a Breach Attractor, so they can't really do anything to leave the planet. And of course, we're apparently the chosen one, and only we can stop at Theros. Yeah, I have seen two cases where being a chosen one was bullcrap. There's also multiple weapons to obtain, with some actually being exclusive to secret areas, with my favorites being the Kilver, some invisible force generator thingy, some yo-yo thing I can't remember, and... Thanks, Paul, the flamethrower! The kids love this one. Granted, while I've only used, like, these four, the others have some good uses for them, such as this boss which requires a specific weapon or two to damage it because the weak point is its ass. At least I think that's its ass. Well, at least it wasn't an innocent person. Oh, never mind, it turns out I have not killing people. Put me in the brig. I don't mind. <laughs> ah, crap. Apparently those things were people, but they were loyal to Athedos with no ounce of innocence in them at all, as they helped spread the pathogen. In other words, they're complicit in his crimes. Hey, don't worry, you can vote them out come November, right? So we finally repair the drones and go to find Ophelia, another Rusalkli who should be able to clear up the pathogen. Come with me, little buddies. We're gonna go on an adventure. Da, 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 that's a big ass fucking head. Oh, things ain't looking too good right now. Everything's getting. Also, we fight a boss and yet it's us and yet we're fighting us and we defeat ourselves and then kind of die or pass out or whatever. Yeah, basically the pathogen that was created by the Breach and Atheros and such was finally getting to us. Warping our surroundings into a mindfuck that Hideo freaking Kojima would be proud of. And in our recovery, we realized the truth. That lab explosion? It wasn't what brought us here. In fact, it's actually what helped create Atheros. And by Atheros, I mean us. We're Atheros. 
Okay, I know this was referencing stuff like Metroid and other 80s inspired stuff, but I didn't expect to reference this Vice Project Doom types of plot twist stories. Anyone know that game? I played it on Grumcade a couple years back. Pro Jared was on it. Yeah, I'm actually very unsure about what to make of this. Apparently, the only one to stop at Thedos is us, and I guess we're basically a clone or something from another timeline, un uncorrupted and relatively pure. Plus, we're pattern minds, meaning that we can manipulate reality at will. Well, I guess that explains the canon and the glitches being intentional here. Alright, that's fine, I guess. As we further progress, we- OH MY LORD! You, uh... You, 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 you okay there, buddy? You want a soda? Christ, that's a bit of an overreaction, don't you think? I mean, yeah, soda's unhealthy, but you don't need to kill yourself over that fact. We then discover we're not actually clones because Athedos is much older, and yet this wasn't the first time Athedos showed up, and we actually are clones, but we were from a rebirth chamber, aka Zay, point from years ago. You know, whether this is time travel or cloning or what have you, this is just too confusing to fucking understand. It's like the whole cell situation with DBZ and all that. I don't know if I can continue this. I mean, what do you think they're gonna do? Kill me? Oh. Okay. I actually find it pretty funny where Trace is like, I don't want to kill him. And El Snow is like, yes you are. And he's just like, how you gonna do that? And she goes, just goes like this. And then, <clears throat> I don't know why. I just find the delivery of this funny. Though it ends up not that funny when it turns out that El Snova has hate towards us because we're dead -os yet not. Eh, fuck it, forget it. Oh god, not this boss. Uku is a fucking bitch to fight. Yes, this wasp thing is called Uku. What a shock. Its only weak point is his mouth, when opened, and the window for it is just so fucking small. He gets faster and more erratic and impossible to fucking beat. It's so rough that you have to rely on the little bugs it shoots out by glitching them and making sure the damn thing gets pretty close enough for you to have to shoot them and explode, but you have to be perfectly aligned with it, no room for error. Otherwise it just won't work and it'll be back to the fucking drawing board. This took me a goddamn hour to beat, damn it! You know what? I'm gonna talk to the animal about this. Maybe he can help with, like, something easier for that or something. <laughs> eh, it's probably just rust or something. Unless I just suck. Hey, look on the bright side. There's a passcode tool that allows us to translate notes and access areas with items we couldn't otherwise get to. Oh, I know. I wonder if it'll... Ten out of ten best game. This. This is how you do a fucking Metroid reference. Fucking awesome. Funny thing though, I legit thought collecting things in the Justin Bailey suit had glitched my game out to the point that I made a big spiel about it on Twitter with Dan and also Tom. However, I was just a giant fucking Nimrod and didn't realize the admin question was behind the fucking wall and not in plain sight and that the wall was, you know, going being able to go through that damn thing. I am so sorry to both Mr. Hap and Mr. Adelman about my pers pestering over that as I was a fucking dumbass and I just feel awful about my stupidity. Oh, for God's sakes, another one of these bosses? Come on, I'm almost at the end! Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Well, at least we make it to the Thedos, as we're set with arguably the hardest and most challenging boss we'll ever... Huh. That was easy. Flamethrower's fucking OP. Well, at least we didn't have to kill it that... El Snova, what the hell? We are then returned to Earth as if nothing ever happened. Except for the explosion, but the injuries and the blindness didn't stick around. Trace, determined for answers, goes into full-on research mode, potentially setting the stage for Athedos to rise again. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Axion Verge, for the most part. Now, there is an extra cutscene for getting 100% completion for the map. Not so much items, mostly the map, which... It does reward you for that, at the very least. However, I don't think there's much I can say from it aside from a look of shock. And if I can say something about it, it's that I don't think I'll ever understand the story or much else about this game, and that's okay. Regardless, this game is fucking worth it, man. This game is still a hell of a lot of fun in its gameplay and whatnot, and it's definitely fun to go around and explore everything, especially if it does kind of reward you with a special cutscene ending. The plethora of weapons is also great, as it gives you such a large variety of what to use to fight enemies. Even if some, including bosses, require some specifics or even the need to glitch. 
as it changes things up and keeps things fresh. The story was, again, confusing at times, but then again, what plot of 1980s stuff, whether it be action or otherwise, was it? The use of in-game glitches like that is definitely fucking genius, and a nice throwback of sorts too. So no, this game isn't going on the sheet, and while I'm tempted to put just Uku on the sheet at the very least, I feel that this game is still too good to have anything from it on the sheet, and I also don't want everything on the sheet to just be part of an otherwise great game, you know? So yeah, get this game, it's amazing, and definitely worth your time. In fact, I technically own this game on two systems now, Wii U and PS4, and I would love to like get the Multiverse Edition on the Switch. The Multiverse Edition being a physical copy of the game as well as some little extras like trinkets and all that, you know, made by the guys, part of the XA on Virtual Lore and all that, like an info, I think concept art as well, which is pretty cool. And yeah, I know the game is only like 300 megabytes or so digitally, but again, the extras are definitely an enjoyable thing, and I'd like it to be my first physical Switch game, to be honest. I don't want to taste it, though. I mean, that, that, why, why did, why was that even a thing? Tasting Switch cartridges when they're, when they explicitly said that it's bitter and, like, terrible to taste. Though it will be a while until I get the Multiverse Edition on Switch, if they're going to be still available by then. Mostly because of the fact that the game would end up being 40 bucks. I mean, I'm not, I'm not rich, I'm poor, so... Let's just hope it's not limited release or anything. Also, shout out to both Dan Edelman and Tom Happ for being good sports about all this, you know, being patient for all that as well with like, tweeting and pestering them. Again, I'm really freaking sorry about that whole situation. And I hope you guys did enjoy this video very much. You guys are freaking geniuses, and I love you guys. One last thing before this video ends. Dan Edelman, I don't know if you remember this, but when I first got this game on Wii U, you helped me out on Miiverse, and I managed to get through the place, and I... The comments aren't able to be viewed because, you know, Miiver's backup didn't include that, but just, I don't know if you remember that, but thanks again for that as well, and just stay awesome, guys. Stay awesome. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, click the like button to show your support, and you can subscribe for more. Click any of the cards and such to check out the videos there and whatnot. You can also check out my social medias in the description below, and please remember to stay awesome. Bye bye